Welcome to Home Renovation. It's YouTube's favorite channel for all things DIY, where we teach you how to do renovations at home and get professional results. Today we are going to be installing a three-way tub shower valve, and we're going to convert from original copper over to PEX, and we're going to show you all the tips and tricks so that when you go to put on your finishing trim, it comes out flawless. Now stay with us, because this is going to be a lot of fun. So this shower is going to be converted from a traditional two-piece where they had a tub spout and just a shower head sticking out of the wall to a three-way shower valve. And the awesome part about that is, is we're going to be able to use PEX to run all of our fixture because our shower valve has the ability, it has a mixer, so you turn it to the function that you want. So you don't have to worry about if the supply line is big enough to the tub because we don't have a physical diverter here. Everything is done in the handle, so you have complete control of the water. You can mix two of the other functions together, and it's a dream shower because we're gonna have a tub spout, we're gonna have a shower wand on a five foot hose, plus we're installing a rain shower head. So you get to set this up to have the water pouring down your head, massage on the back of the neck. Oh man, this is living. So the first step is to get rid of the old shower. Now as a time-saving measure, because we finished up our second day on a Friday, I actually installed the supply line to the rain shower head first. And I've got it on my uh, drop ear up here on, on a piece of wood. That way I could have my drywall in place and do all my taping. I popped in on Saturday, did another coat of mud. So today is Monday and now I'm in a place where I've had that drying time all taken care of over the course of a weekend. So now just a quick third coat first thing this morning. My mud work is done and I can move forward without having an extra day delay. So we're going to just get rid of our copper line. Ah. And these little mini cutters are great for tight spots, but they do have a downside. <clears throat> you don't get as much leverage, so you need a little bit more finger power, right? Now, if you've never seen one of these before, it's basically just a small cutting wheel. And then you turn the handle and create a compression. And then it decreases the size of the cutting wheel and slowly you'll cut through the soft copper. All right, there we go. <laughs> now this is not the fastest way to get something done, but it does work. And it's one of those tools that if you're gonna be doing plumbing, you're probably gonna to wanna to have in your bag. We got it. Okay, now in this particular job, we managed to run new water supply lines right from the basement. So we've actually got this all tied in in the basement. And if you haven't seen that before, basically what you do is you cut the copper line and you have to sweat on this female fitting. Okay, it goes over the copper pipe. And then you have a PEX cap and you can go PEX plumbing from there. Now this is a perfect place to do that in the basement. Run a brand new supply line. That keeps you from having to have a hidden shark bite in your wall if you don't have access. Of course, I know a lot of people have seen our old video where we used a shark bite. And in that bathroom, we actually had a trap door, so we had access to it. So if you got a drip develop over 20 years, you are able to solve that problem and switch the fitting out. But here, we're just removing this all together. So here we have our Rebo Pro three-way valve, and you can see that it has a hot and a cold input, and they have built-in shutoff valves, and then there's one, two, three outputs, okay? So the idea here is we want to install this for regular daily use as a shower, so you want to put it somewhere that's nice and handy, not too high, all right? So first mark we want to make is where our water supply lines will come across. That'll help. And then we have one line coming up towards the shower. And then one line here is the third line. And we're gonna loop it around and bring it over to one of these drop ears. And then from here, we're gonna be able to connect our hose for our wand. So in order to mount all this, because we also have one down to the tub, we need to put wood in the wall here to secure this. So the valve body secured. We need wood in the wall down here because we're going to use the same drop ear for the tub spout. And we need wood on this wall for this. And we have to set them all at different depths. 
Now here's the secret. We're going to show you what depth to set all of these at so that you get the right finish. Now the valve body itself comes with this little clip-on device. And this basically sets the minimum and the maximum that the thickness of the finished wall. Okay, so as long as you're sitting on wood and the finished wall is within this range, you're going to have a successful installation. It's a little bit of give and take. So what you do is you take into account half inch for drywall, another quarter inch or three eighths for tile, and you're good to go. What I found in my experience is that the thickness of a two by four plus the shower valve always comes out perfect in a two by four wall. So I've gone ahead and measured and cut this in advance. Although I should say Matt cut it. He didn't cut it very straight. I have to teach him how to use that square again. There's two, that's for the top spout, right? All right, very important to note that no matter what system you're using, nine out of 10 shower valves that are out there will have holes for mounting, okay? And they'll also have holes to screw the finished plate on. And so you need to identify the difference. And you either take the finished plate and check out where the holes line up, but usually you can just check here. These holes have got threads, okay? So we know that that's for mounting the plate and that's just a regular hole. So we're gonna just go ahead and screw that in where it goes. Now, if your screws are too long, like ours are here, because we have inch and a half, half inch drywall, about an inch here, that's two and a half. This is a three inch screw, it's too long. You can just take your electrical pliers, cut it down. Don't worry about the tip. Give it a little extra, extra rub here. Or you can set the hole first with the screw, back it out and cut it. You all always have the right size for the job. Just to start make this make sense, here's the best part of PEX plumbing. You eyeball measurement, right? And then you go a little bit longer because you can always give yourself a little bit more room. So here we are. Now we got our pecs. We have a solid, solid copper rings. Okay. And they just slide over top and then you push it in place. And when you get it down to where you want, just give it a bit of a pinch so it holds in place. This makes it a lot easier to use the crimp. Years ago, when we were doing some videos, we found that uh, the old crimp rings, they were cost effective. So as a homeowner, you could afford to buy a crimp ring tool for about 30 bucks. But the solid ring tools were running two to $400. For someone that's just doing a quick little bathroom, that was ridiculous. But this one here now, you can get these things for about 30 to $40. So you just set it on the ring and squeeze. Whew. Now that's done. I'm gonna demonstrate you how this works. You put that ring in here and you go to squeeze it. It doesn't close, all right? Then you squeeze it and it compresses it into a smaller diameter. And that compresses the, the PEX tubing over top of the ribs that are on the brass fitting. You can't possibly slide a ring in to that hole unless it's been crimped, all right? And that's that little bit of a difference that puts all that pressure. Now remember, most homes are on you know, 50 to 60 PSI, not a lot of pressure. And it's gonna take a couple hundred in order to bust that ring open. So this is why this is a fail safe system. You're never gonna experience that kind of pressure in your water line. And if you do, you got a bigger problem than what kind of plumbing you're using. <laughs> now, before we go any further, we really wanna set this up. This one's really important. Uh, the finishing trims, for the hoses that come off the wall. They have these drop ears. You have to set it at the right depth because the brass fitting that connects the drop ear from the finish trim, those brass fittings only come every half inch increments. So if you don't set it at the right depth, you're gonna be extremely tight to the wall or sitting way off the wall and not be able to seal it up properly. So here's the math that works great. If you install this drop ear, flush, flush to the two by four on the front. Okay, that's the secret. So what you do is take your fitting and attach it to the two by four first. Then you take this up to the wall 
okay? And you screw it exactly where you want it. We also have a tub spout. That goes directly in line. And if you're concerned at all about your line, you can pull out your laser level. That'll be a good idea. Here we go. All right. I've heard a lot of people in comment section talking about the PEX plumbing and these fittings that you use to make the corners. And when you put a, a fitting inside the pipe, oh, doesn't that make the water flow decrease or affects the pressure or the performance of your shower? And the reality is this, guys. I mean, here we have the shower valve, and it has got the same fitting on the valve. So if you're using these in your water supply system, you're not changing anything than what's happening here. And the reason we're not concerned about it, and I'll tell you this secret, because nowadays, almost every fixture that you put on the, on the, on the shower, your shower head and all that sort of thing, the inside diameter of the, of the fixture itself is a lot smaller than, than the fitting at the valve. They put water flow restrictors and stuff in there nowadays. So this is actually, if you use these fittings, it's the, it's the largest part of the plumbing system that's going on. If you were to bring a three quarter inch line into this valve, you're not supplying any more water than you are with a half inch using these fittings. So don't get concerned about it. There's a lot of people on the internet just talking out of both sides of their mouths when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I think a lot of it is just guys trying to scare people away from doing this plumbing so that they continue to call the plumber. <laughs> but we all know better. Once you learn how easy it is to put this together, you'll become your own favorite plumber. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for a plumber. But basic installation of simple systems like this, it's not the time to be putting out the big dollars. These guys did not go to school to learn how to put in a shower valve. They got highly trained for a lot more important situations. Okay, so now the way we assemble all of this, <laughs> I should probably just go through this really quick. We're basically eyeballing everything, putting the fittings in place. It's just a quick connect system. It's something you could probably teach a five-year-old. <laughs> okay. 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 Now you'll find, depending where you go, the piping comes in three colors, red, white, and blue. Irony of that. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use. This is more for a, um, identification purposes of knowing what's hot and cold line. Outside of that, it doesn't make a difference. So, really the only secret is get the rings in place before you open the fitting. You can always slide them up and down afterwards. Okay, now, this is the, the really cool part. Because it's longer, it has to go all the way down, all you do is bend it in place. All right, like that. Now, if you find that that's too long, take it off and give it a trim. No worries. It doesn't even have to be straight. Okay. Da -da -da. Slide that up. Slide that down. All right, now we're ready to crimp. Crimp our supply lines. And you really want to have this about an eighth of an inch from the brass fitting. So set it in place. Now that's the manufacturer's suggestion. You will find that if you're off just a little bit one way or the other, you're going to be okay. But you don't want to be in a situation where you're too far away or the pipe isn't going to be over the ribbing where you put the compression and you won't have a seal. Now, we've got a couple of situations here where the crimping isn't just going to work. That's normal. We're just going to back out our screws a little bit, pull it off the wall because you can see the crimper goes in behind the fitting. All right, let's screw back up. It's a little tight in the corner. All right, so we're just gonna pull it off the wall a little bit and then we'll be okay. 
in the event that it's just too inconvenient. Look at the flexibility you have here. Right? Everything else is crimped together except this one joint. You can pull it right off the wall, bring it over to a place where it's accessible. No, you can't do that with copper. You don't have that kind of flexibility. One of the best things about this system, because we're going with the center line off the tub, framing, they never build a frame around a tub where they give you a proper space to do the plumbing. It's really kind of stupid. Remember, the framers don't care about the plumbers on a job site. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use a system that gives us lots of flexibility. Okay, PEX is incredibly flexible. It's, it's flexible and make a nice contour, but if you're, if you're not careful and you bend it too much at once, it'll crimp like that. Okay, and that's not acceptable. Now you're really causing a water supply problem. So because we're going to go from here to here, we're going to be just slowly working my tubing. Okay, trying to get it nice and tight here so it doesn't cut, doesn't bend over, right? Okay. Now the same thing. Okay. All right. Eyeball it. Give yourself a little extra room here. Okay. Oh yeah. Perfect. No need for a fitting here. We'll crimp this one on. Okay. Same thing as the tub. Can't get in there, but that's fine. There we go, lots of room. Do -do -do. All right. Now, <laughs> we have successfully roughed in an entire three way system, about 15 minutes. That is awesome. Uh, super quick. So, the only thing left to do now is just take your screwdriver into your shutoff valve. And as long as it's horizontal in line with the pipe, that means it's open, turn it 90 degrees to the closed position before you turn the water on to the house again. Okay, now remember this is a mixing valve and it's just the test cap in here for now. All right, so the water will flow freely. And if you leave the lines open with that system in place, then the hot water will actually heat the water in the cold line. It'll run all the way back. <laughs> God only knows. I've seen situations where we've done this and the hot water works its way back to the toilet. Then the toilet starts to sweat profusely. <laughs> Client will call on the weekend. My toilet's boiling hot. <laughs> so to avoid that problem, just turn off the shutoff valves and that'll give you the ability to finish the rest of the work here without worrying about getting rained on. Now, after the break, we're going to come back. We're going to show you how to put all the finishing trim on because it's not good enough to know how to rough it in. You got to know how to install all the finishing trims. And the Rebel, Rebel Pro system allows you to do that without the use of silicone on your finished tile. And that is pretty. So we have been working in this bathroom for a few days. We're at a point where we've got the tile and the grout work pretty much finished. We have some touch-ups to do and silicone to put on. But we're going to go through the finishing trim at this point because I just had a few cuts that I had to get done and I don't want to have to wait. But I'm going to show you how to get this trim installed on finished tile and in what order because you don't want to go out, do all your grout and all your silicone and then install your finished trim because we do have to drill a couple holes and that dust that comes from the back of that ceramic tile is going to get down into your uncured silicone and it's going to stain it forever. So there is an order of doing things. You want to get all your finishing trim on before you silicone your showers. That way you'll be happy. You've got a nice clean surface when you silicone and you're not going to be dragging dirt into it. I believe that we are good to go. Now remember, we have our shutoff valves in the off position. We've also turned off the water. Hopefully, my son has got that correct. <laughs> I'm working with my boy Matt again today. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> Now, this is the Rebel Pro system, and you will see that we have a faceplate, some mounting screws, and this is actually one of my favorite parts of the entire system. All right, that's my handle, that's my body valve. I love this technology. 
almost everything you go and buy at the store is not going to have one of these. Um, what this is, is this is a surface mounted plate with gasket on the interior and on the back side. Okay, so you got an interior gasket and an exterior gasket. And what that does is it provides a perfect seal all around your fixture up against your tile. And if you need to, because you have any concerns, you could add a little bit of clear silicone here, knowing that when you put your finish plate over top, you don't need to silicone the chrome trim to the tile. That always looks like junk. It always ends up looking like a mess and it'll always fail too. So this is actually a far superior system to keeping water out of the shower area behind the valve body than using silicone because it won't ever fail. So the secret here is to take these two mounting screws, which are designed for two by six construction. So they're extra long and they've got little cutoff places there. And you simply put the head in first all the way to the back to the wood which is the deepest that that can go. And then you pick which point is right at the edge of the tile. I have almost an inch of play in the back is extra. So I just go edge of tile, look behind it. The first one there is the one that I'm going to be cutting it off. Cut these things off is simple. You just take a pair of square head linesman pliers and we'll just do the same cut for both. <clears throat> now, if you cut on the predetermined notch, you won't affect the thread, which is key because when you go to install this, you don't want to be messing up and cross threading into the valve body. All right, so here we go. Now we've got that set. We want to take our cartridge, hot and cold, hot's always on the left. We slide that in. Perfect every time. Now you take this here. Now this is solid brass, it's machined at the factory and it has two flat spots on it for a wrench, okay? You need to be really careful when you're tightening this on. And you want to basically go hand tight and then grab a wrench, set it on those flat spots and give it a quarter turn. That's it, you don't have to go any tighter. So now we have our screws cut. We've put our plate over top of our cover here and we have the drain hole that's already drilled in the cover, which will be on the exterior of the tile. We slide this over top, push it back to the wall, and we hand thread these into the valve body until we have a few threads and we're comfortable that we're cross-threaded. Very important here. And I'm not sure why I'm missing. There we go. Once we do that, we take the drill and tighten it all up. Not too snug. Just enough pressure on these, on these screws to put compression on this plate nice and tight to the tile. Once we have that, we want to stop. If you over tighten, then the plate will warp and you won't have a good seal. So now that that's all done, we can put on our cover plate. Now, this is really awesome. It snaps in place. Done. Here's your name. Function one, two, and three. And the way this works is when we put on our handle, you'll simply turn the handle to which function you want to have the water coming out of. That's it. Nothing will drip. You can actually even mix if you land in between the two. So you can use the rain shower head with the, with the shower one at the same time. It's a great feature. So the handles that come with this are your main handle, which is your selection. So this will pick which function you're going with. And then the little one here, this is actually your thermostatic valve. This one you can preset the temperature and no matter where you put your handle, the preset temperature stays there. So it's an obvious advantages here. Now, this product is made in Canada, so it is metric. So you need an Allen key that is metric to tighten on these two Allen keys here. This is a two and a half mil. There we go. And then, now this is how we do this. Thermostatic valves have a maximum and a minimum. And what you want to do, just for simplicity, is have pointing down, just for design, it's aesthetic really, in the middle temperature, not at the hottest. 
because you'll find that that's about where you're going to want it anyway. <laughs> so what you do is you put this on, and you'll see it has a little mark here at the top. And you go all the way to the left, and that's about 9 o'clock, pointing that way. All the way to the right. And it goes to about, wow, almost 8. Okay, so if I go back to 12 o'clock, I'm not in the middle. So I want to go... Oh, Eight three is eleven. Three four about one thirty ish. Take it off and then reset it in the middle. Now I'm in the middle. Here we go. And you set that handle right there with that. It's one screw. And then this little package here comes with a couple of decorative caps, just to help keep water out of the body. Okay, in both the on and off position. So. Here we are. Okay. Now we have those on. Now the way this functions is when I turn this valve, you'll feel it pretty much set, sit in like a little saddle in there. That's third, that's the second. And you'll hear it click through all the different options. Absolutely amazing. So that can be on, then that's off. That's on, that's mixed, that's on, that's off. That's a lot of fun. Okay, now when it comes to the tub spout, you know, we've done videos in the past where we did PEX to the tub spout, but it was a physical diverter. It had a little handle on it and then it would divert water up. And when you're filling your tub, um, sometimes there's too much pressure in the system and a little water would go into the shower and the tub would be filled also by the shower head a little bit, which isn't really a problem, but some people get a little worked up over it. So what we've got here is a complete PEC system and comes down to a drop ear for the tub. You can see it right here. And what they've done is they've went out and developed these little systems here. Now this is threaded half inch to go into my drop ear and half inch to go into my tub spout, all right? And Nick doesn't just sit in there, it can thread all the way through. It's got a lot of variability here, all right? So you can set this up with that one piece and it should solve just about every tub situation you have. Now, there we go, we'll get a little bit of this on here. Just help make sure it goes in easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to line this up nice and easy like, make sure you're not cross threading because it's plastic inside, okay? And then we're going to thread this on over and over and over and over and over and over again until we get right up to the wall and this takes a minute. <laughs> and then the secret here is to know if you're putting too much pressure that you're going to break the tile and still get a good seal. I'm comfortable with that. That is really nice. Awesome. Now we can use a little bit of a clear silicone bead here, but I mean just a little bit, and we'll get to that in a minute. So now we got the shower arm, we got the tub spout, now we're putting the rain shower in. And you can see this little blue thing was awesome. It helps to facilitate measuring the stone to a perfect hole. Love these. We're going to be putting in a rain shower head. This is the extension rod that comes with it. It is solid brass, so it'll be really effective at carrying the weight. Now, we're just going to put a few wraps of Teflon on here. And when I say a few, I mean a crazy amount. I like between seven and ten times around just because that's 49 cents a roll and there's no way I'm going to let one of these things leak because I'm trying to save a nickel. Now the secret is to place it in the hole and go really careful. You don't cross thread it.
Now, when it gives you a fair amount of resistance, you know you're set. But you can force it past <clears throat> into the position that you want, knowing that those three screws that mount that drop here in the wall aren't going to break and give up. Uh, uh. Now, when you got to work that hard to get your shower rod in position, you can be confident it's not going to leak. Time for a sexy shower head. You know what's funny? I actually had somebody in the comments section telling me I shouldn't use the word sexy. <laughs> anyway, I said, never. Um, these come with a gasket inside, so you don't need the thread tape. Okay, this gasket will give you the seal that you want. It also has a couple of flat sections on here. You can put a wrench to it if you need to. Here's the secret. Get it up here. The shower head itself isn't going to be level, so you can't, you can't do it from standing underneath, all right? Get it to where you want it, and I'll be right back. Grab a little bit of the bubble wrap that came with the packaging, put it on here with the wrench adjusted to the right size. <laughs> and give it a nice quarter turn past what you can do with your fingers. Now you've set that in that gasket and it's not going to leak. It's going to give you great pressure. But even with a shower head that gives you great pressure, you don't have enough pressure in a rain shower head traditionally to clean soap out of your head if you've got a lot of hair, unlike myself. So if uh, you have shoulder length hair or longer, you're going to need more pressure, which is why we're going with a three function. Now it is time to put on the shower rod. Now we want to go this one first because it helps to establish, you know, aesthetically where the rod should go. Now we'll install our adjustable shower rod and I'm going to show you the secret. Now remember when we first put this together, I took a little measurement from the corner of the drywall over to where the 2x4 was and I took a picture of my phone so I'd have record of it when I was done and it was 20 and a quarter. Now I am looking at 19 and 3 quarters. That's about my center line because it's thicker now than the And I'm just going to put this green line here. Turn on my laser. Bring that over to my tape line. All right, now we're in business. And this is why you need a laser, because you don't want to install your bar like that. <laughs> and yes, you could be that crooked. So what we're going to do is visually set this so that we like where it sits. Um, we want it to be not on a grout line because that's too, run too much of a chance of it chipping and causing a weak spot where it'll crack. And I like this, about a half inch from a grout line, half inch from a grout line. That's good for me. So I'm going to just go like, put my pencil mark there. I'm going to translate that spot there. And I know that these have to be 29 and 7 eighths from each other. There we go. That simple. When you're putting holes in your tile, it's not a time for trial and error. <laughs> We're not mounting a TV, so you can't have a bunch of holes hiding behind the TV when you're done here. You only get one shot at this, so you got to get it done right. For the purpose of our demonstration, I'm using a cheap and easy glass and tile bit by Ryobi. This is $9 at a Canadian hardware store. I'm sure down in the United States, you can probably get it for about five or six. This is considered a one-use bit, but when you're drilling into ceramic tile, you can actually get a dozen holes if you go in low speed. So you can mount one of these, you can put in a, your, your hotel rod, it usually takes three or four screws on each side. So one bit like this, you can mount everything into your shower for a fraction of the price. If you're a homeowner and you're only going to do this once, this is the bit to go with. And you'll see how quick and easy it is in ceramic. Now we're on one speed, we're not even using hammer drill here, nice and easy. Done. Nothing to it. What I want to do is take my screw. It fits right in there like that. <clears throat> and I'm going to mount the bottom. Just as a test. Now traditionally the screws that they send you are only long enough to go into plugs. I suggest getting a longer screw.
Done. There we go. Now I just gotta get some longer screws. There we go. Now, very important here to remember how you ran your plumbing. <laughs> if you brought your water supply up and through, you don't wanna run the risk of putting a screw through a water supply line, which is why it's important to measure before you close the wall, after you've closed the wall, know what's going on behind the wall, because you're gonna to wanna to screw this long enough to get into that wood to give you a really good fit. Now I'm using a three inch construction screw here. I also have a two by four construction wall, so I'm not concerned about that. Here we are. And I know that since I found wood, all my plumbing is to the right. Do not over tighten here. If it's pulling off the wall, there we go. If it pulls off the wall, give another torque. Take it easy. Beautiful. Now, people are inevitably going to be writing in going, oh, the construction screw in a shower, that's terrible. Listen. Shouldn't have any wiggle. There we go. That's better. One of the reasons I intentionally didn't put it on a grout line is so there is no opportunity for water to get in there, okay? Now, very important that these caps, you'll see, they have a, a scooped out edge and then a flat ridge. The scooped out edge is top and bottom and it goes where this rod comes through. So as long as you install it right, it'll fit nice and flush. If you don't, it'll leave a gap and it'll look ugly and then water will be able to get inside that fixture. Okay, done. Whew. One of the reasons I love this system, look at this. Right? <laughs> There's no strength in those fingers. Anybody can move this up and down to make it work. Young people, older people, arthritic condition, doesn't matter. This system is really optimal for that. Now, the last thing is to attach the hose and we come over here. I remember when we were installing the rough in, I told you to take your, uh, your, I told you to take the drop ear and set it flush with your wood so that you can use a one and a half inch male thread to male thread. Okay. And this will work out perfect every time. Now I get to see if I was full of it. Now, again, because we're going inside a wall, I'm going to suggest we go about seven to ten times on here. And some of you might think that's ridiculous, but it takes six seconds of my day. Okay, again, if you're not sure if you're cross threading, go counterclockwise until it sits. Did you see that? I'll do that again. Go counterclockwise oh, until it sits in, then go clockwise. Okay, and then you take this awesome little Thing here and this is the elbow and it, that takes the male thread and that's what connects to the hose okay do the same thing when it gets some Teflon on here this is too close to the wall you don't want that leaking at that point right there that runs the risk of having a disaster so here we go we'll go backward counterclockwise until it sits and then you go forward and you know you see you can zoom in really close. You can see that the, 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 the pipe is actually turning in back as well. All right. And this is how we make sure that this thing is really well sealed. Until you got to work for it, you're not done. That's just how simple this is. Okay, we're getting to the point. We got to work for this now. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. Now, we want to get our finishing trim on before we attach the hose, or it's quite difficult to put the hose on. Here we go. You just slide up and on. Now, this feature here has a gasket. It's proud of the trim, okay? So you see that? So when I put this on, I'm installing it in a place. Now, one of the things is I also measured this so I knew it wouldn't be on the grout line. It's good to have your tile before you run your plumbing. 
Now that gasket is on one solid piece of tile. This might take more than one try. Always give it a couple of turns before you bring out anything mechanical. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. You only get one screw in the box. Make sure it's nice and snug. Beautiful. And then you just put on your decorative cap and there's no trick to this one at all. All right. Now we have a beautiful little shower wand here that comes in the kit. It has multiple functions, all right? So this will give you all the pressure you need. It also has a massage feature. So here's my favorite, right? You just set this up, boom, turn this on the back of your neck, mix it with the rain shower head. Now you're standing underneath a waterfall with a massage going on. Don't ever call me until the hot water runs out. That's living, all right? The hose itself, we should talk about this because this is a great feature. They both have gaskets, okay? So again, you don't need Teflon tape, you don't need to over tighten, all right? It also says right here, if we can catch the light right, it says flow, all right? So you're following the water, so that way you get the right, right fitting on here so that this is where the water comes and this is the one that sits in there. That sits really perfect, okay? So we're gonna tighten up our water here now. We're gonna do that hand tight. We're gonna grab our bubble wrap because this also has those two flat sections. But when you're dealing with chrome, the last thing you wanna do is mark it, okay? Here we go. So use the bubble wrap, get a good tight on there so that the gasket will do a good job sealing. Same thing here, go counterclockwise. Oh, until you feel it, and then go forward. That's a plastic thread on a plastic wand, okay? Chrome finish, but the idea here is you don't want something heavy and metal sitting on this in case you drop it. This won't break your tub. <laughs> I'd rather buy one of these every once in a while if I have an accident than breaking my tub. And here we go. Now, this one you can just hand tighten. You never want to use the pliers on a, on a plastic thread, okay? Here's the other benefit of this. It, it's adjustable. Okay, so you can do whatever you want to do with this thing. All right, brilliant. It sits in there on any angle. You can adjust this till your cows come home. Now, look at this hose. This is awesome. Brilliant hose. It has a nice hang to it. Okay. You know you got quality when a hose sits like this. If this was like... I can't use a brand name, someone will hate on me. If this was a cheap plastic one, the hose would be sitting here like this afterwards. And it would just be like, er, and you're stuck there, right? It looks like junk, those old plastic hoses. So good solid metal hose, connected properly. It's very aesthetic, it's sleek, it's sexy. And I'm gonna use it ever, ever, and ever again, it's sexy. Okay, well there we have it. We've got all of our fixtures installed. The only thing left to do now is turn on the water to make sure that we've got that right. Okay, let's get this all pointed in the right direction, first of all. Okay, so we're going to do our water test now. Whew. And there's a possibility that our handle might be in the wrong position. We're going to know about that in just a minute. Okay, Matt, so let's go ahead and turn on the water to the house. All right, quarter turn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now it's important to turn off all your fixtures in the house first or you'll never get enough pressure to bring the water upstairs. Matt's just turning everything off downstairs now. Alright, here's another quarter turn. Okay, thank you. Okay, well let's give this a try. And I'm going to step out of the tub in case the rain shower comes on first. That's the tub. Tub is in position number two. I'm going to guess rain shower is number one. Hey, 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 good guess. Oh, now that is pretty. All right. That means hand shower is number three. And there's the mix of them both. All right. Well, that is pretty much all the information you're going to need to install this particular shower valve unit. Three-way shower made really easy. If you like this information, hit the thumbs up button. We'd love to hear from you. 
ask your comments in the question below because I'm going to be here to help. Remember, if you're doing this installation or anything similar and you got questions, hit us in the comments and I will answer those every single day. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well. We're going to see you again real soon. Thanks for joining us. Click the video to see how this project turned out.